What geography fact blows your mind? By R. Scridit. Palm trees grow in Ireland at 53 degrees north. In Canada at 55 degrees north there are polar bears. Wife was so shocked by the palm trees at the airport lol. Palm trees in England as Vietnam when filming Full Metal Jacket? Yes but complicated. HTTPS slash slash and dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash full underscore metal underscore jacket number filming. For our honeymoon, we drove all throughout Ireland, not staying in one city for more than two days. The palm trees shocked me more than anything else I saw the entire trip. I had previously only seen them in Florida. It was just so bizarre. I can't get past that I'm in Michigan and most of Europe is farther north than me. The weather is not comparable. Our weather is non-comparable to literally anywhere. I'm pretty sure lake effect snow is not a thing in Europe. Ha, ah, central and northern Germany just got dumped with snow, and I heard the German weatherman say lake effect snow. I assume there isn't an established German word for it, because he did say it in English, and went on to explain it. Till. Palm trees in Ireland. There's palm trees in North France too where it mostly just pisses rain. Thank goodness for the Gulf Stream. This amazed me when I visited Galway. I'm from the northeast US and was further north than my home, which gets pummeled by snow every winter, yet there were palm trees planted in people's yards. Australia is wider than the moon. Way a a art. Australia is wider than the moon. Huawait. W-A-T. Australia is wider than the moon. A little bit softer now. Edit, thanks for the gold. 2021 is already better than 2020. Australia is softer than the moon. One more time in Australian. Oh. But liquor. Our pros say have never been lower. That is totally inappropriate. You never yell at the client. Astronomer here also, Russia has more surface area than Pluto. Holy crap it's an astronomer. And that fact definitely trumps mine. Not only an astronomer, it's Andromeda 3, 2, 1. You could put the entire moon in Australia, but most experts agree that this would be a bad idea. Then you'd have moon spiders. Are you? Are you calling Australia fat? The distance between New Zealand and Australia is roughly the same as the distance between the Netherlands and Libya. Came up in this thread comparing chocolate milk around the world. One redditor made the assertion that NZ's chalk milk was probably as bad as Australia's, because of the proximity of the two countries edit, I feel like forward slash you forward slash Fapuni should get credit for pointing this out. That is a good one. I'll admit most North Americans think of them as being just across a strait from each other. I think most of us down here think the same. It's only when you compare to other countries you get a true sense of scale. Did you know that New Zealand is closer to Australia's capital Canberra than Perth, which is all across the mighty outback in Western Australia? So effectively, Australia is bigger than the Tasman. There are 14 mountains over the height of 8,000 metres. All of them are in Asia. Also 60% of people in the world are Asian. Therefore, mountains must be attracted to Asian people. Who are you who are so wise in the ways of science? Probably a mountain. One in five people are Chinese. Wait, I have four friends, and neither one of them are Chinese. Does that mean I'm Chinese? And I have... Four friends, neither of them you lost two friends during that sentence. Thoughts and prayers good sir. Thank you kindly. The Himalayas are also one of the youngest mountain ranges in the world. Geologic timescales are massive of course, but the Indian plate pushing up against Greater Asia is relatively young, and it's still pushing. The Himalayas get taller every year. Despite Canada being the US, neighbor to the north, the majority of Canadians live south of Seattle. There are more people in California than Canada. That one always blows my mind lol. 
I'm Canadian and it blows my mind. Same with the fact that 90% of Canadians live near the south border. I'm in the 10% living far north, so a city of 1 million feels huge to me lol. Not Earth's geography but Mars. Mount Olympus, volcano on Mars, is so big that it curves with the curvature of Mars itself to an extent that you cannot see the peak of the volcano if you would stand at the base of it. Tell that to a flat Marser. To add to this, right next to Mount Olympus is the Tharsis region volcanic plateau, which has three megavolcanoes only slightly smaller than Olympus. Those three volcanoes erupted with such strength and duration that the sheer mass of the newly formed volcanic plateau actually caused Mars crust to bulge and buckle under the stress, with fractures reaching up to halfway around the planet. The Tharsis eruptions may have had a role in the formation of the Vale's Marineries, the Great Martian Rift, and also might have caused a phenomenon called True Polar Wanda, where Mars' axis of rotation shifted due to the plateau throwing Mars' center of mass off. Mars' volcanoes are pretty f in metal. Canada has more lakes than the rest of the world combined. The American state of Maryland by contrast, has no natural lakes. Texas only has one natural lake. Caddo Lake on the Texas slash Louisiana border. Edit, two natural lakes. Thanks to you slash commander underscore Alex underscore Mason. And the Caddo Lake is really just a reservoir made by beavers instead of people. Half a million in Ontario alone. If you took a boat out of Reykjavik and sailed directly south, the first land mass you'd hit would be Antarctica. I once flew into Keflavik and landed at 10.15am, local. It was pitch dark. I once took off from Tokyo at 5pm, and after two connection flights I landed in Denver at 5pm on the same day. I've taken off from Sydney and landed in Vancouver before I left. Rubies and sapphires are in fact, the same mineral, and both of them, as well as emeralds, are actually rarer than diamonds. I just now realize this said geography and not geology oh goodness. I love opals. And yet it's more interesting to me than most other facts. So if they are the same is the color a natural thing or is it manipulated after they are mined by humans? Leave it. This is good stuff. Although I'm on the other side of the planet, only one country separates me from North Korea. Russia. Big ass country. That's Brazil. California is the closest state to Hawaii, but Hawaii is the furthest state from California. Hot you talking about Willis? Okay, I get it. So, the distance between Hawaii and California is greater than the distance between the north and west coasts of the US. But on the maps it's just in a little square to the southwest. Right next to Alaska, which can't be any larger than Texas, honestly. Having flown from New Jersey to Hawaii, yes. And when you have a crabby toddler who can't fall asleep you really start wishing you had taken the flight with the layover. Texas is large enough that I could fit Copenhagen, Brussels, Zagreb and Warsaw with their real-life distances from each other inside the state lines. The Great Lakes contain enough fresh water to flood an area the size of Great Britain in over 100 meters of water. And Lake Superior alone would put North America under a foot of water. Also Lake Superior has a similar area to the country of Austria. I live a kilometer from Superior, it's a big sucker. Texas is also the second largest state of the US behind Alaska. Alaska could divide itself in half into two states, and Texas would become the third largest state. When I worked for FedEx back in the 90s one of the reasons why they chose Anchorage as a global hub, apart from the fact that aircraft use less fuel due to it being cooler, was that it is one of the only places in the world that is within 10 hours of the three biggest global markets, North America, Europe, and Asia. Who would have thought that a place considered in the middle of nowhere is actually the center of the world? Before the collapse of the Soviet Union, 
Anchorage was also a required stop for Trans-Pacific flights because planes couldn't haul enough fuel to divert around Soviet airspace if they started in California. Actually just found that out last week, an aviation YouTube vlogger I follow mentioned it. France's longest border is with Brazil. I beg your pardon, but could you explain that please? French Guiana To relate it to something most people here are familiar with, France in Europe is similar to the continental US. With 13 states, called regions, in Europe, two in the Caribbean, two nearby Madagascar, and French Guiana in South America. They are official regions just like how Alaska and Hawaii are states. And they also have some islands in the Pacific like French Polynesia. They do, but they are not 100% actually fully integrated into France. I see French Guiana to France, as Alaska is to the US, while French Polynesia is more like Puerto Rico to the US. There's a region called French Guiana that is an overseas territory of France. It's on the northern coast of South America and has a border with Brazil. Definitely confused me when I heard it for the first time. France's overseas territories are considered France itself, including French Guiana which borders Brazil. Another fun fact, when flying from France to a French territory, you fly from Oli, domestic, rather than Charles de Gaulle, international, no matter how far, or that's the case with reunion in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, so as a EU citizen you can travel to their Caribbean island without the need of having a passport.